Hi, my name is Kion Kim, owner of Sir Eats in the parlor. I serve Korean comfort food. Our vision behind our menu was we wanted to make Korean food accessible. So I could have started off with some of my personal favorites, but I knew that to the common man it might be a little bit unfamiliar. We use, there's a lot of fermented things, uh, things that are aged for a really, really long time. And I knew that wouldn't really strike comfort or, or even deliciousness to some. So I chose uh, items that I grew up eating that I think could have been a great transition or an introduction, if you will, to Korean food for the general public. So bibimbap, it's like rice bowls with veggies and meat. It's like you can't go wrong with that. So our first pop-up was held uh, in the city market at a restaurant called The Bite, owned by Carlos Motero. And he allowed me to take over his restaurant for dinner service. And we sold bibimbap, kimchi fried rice, rice cakes, and a whole bunch of other dishes just wanting to introduce people to Korean food and from there it just kind of went crazy. We sold out of everything in about an hour and a half at our first pop-up which was unreal to me and after that we were featured on Feast Mag, super grateful for that and I don't know, people kept on asking about our pop-ups and whether it was ticketed or anybody can come in and we did maybe 10 or 12 after. Uh, maybe roughly like once a month or so after that. And we opened along with Parlor in September 2018. Yeah. How's it been so far? It's been awesome. We're just super grateful to be part of this. It was a huge hit. Uh, Parlor in general was a huge hit being the first food hall in Kansas City. Uh, and just super excited to be a part of that. And just grateful for people who have consistently come to our pop ups and uh, like got catering from us, uh, those have become our regulars here in uh, the parlor as well. So Sura is in Korean, Sura is, it's more of an idea or a philosophy of food, it's royal cuisine. Uh, and in the Choson dynasty, the, a lot of the commoners would present the pro produce and the product of the land to the king and queen to say like, here's what Korea has to offer and they would create dishes for them for the health and well-being of king and queen. And yeah, it's just a super elaborate, like cool thing of Korean history. Uh, it was royal cuisine, but eats is kind of the common term for food. So I wanted to have what was once for royalty for everybody, eats. Which is our lettuce wraps. Hi, Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. They really get spice level for me. This is more of a, a deeper spicy. Thai is like in your face. Yeah. Korean is like all here. Yeah. <laughs> like in a typical Korean meal, you'll sit on a table and you'll have something called panchan, which are these little side dishes. They could be vegetables, they could be proteins, and you'll have a main dish and you'll have rice. And sometimes uh, my favorite is when we share a soup all together. And it's really about community, right? It's about family. It's about really connection with a person sitting across from you. So it's, we try to mimic that by our culture and just how we treat folks and how we, the expectations that we set for our hosts uh, and our cooks and how we interact with our customers. But um, yeah, we're just doing the best we can. Like hopefully like every bowl that people eat, it's like comfort and has like some familial nature, nature to it. What is your overall goal for a Yeah. Um, number one, I want to create um, an environment and a culture within my staff where people feel safe, respected, honored. Um, and I think if you were to ask any of our staff, it's we're very much team oriented and one of our core values is family. Uh, just understanding that in a professional context we can have um, an environment where people are challenged uh, but also feel comfortable with who they are. So that's first and foremost. And related to the food, I just want to educate folks. You know, it's uh, in a town like this, people may be unfamiliar to certain cuisines, and we can easily look at it and say, oh, like they don't get us, I'll do me, what have you. But, you know, it's an invitation to me, it's an invitation to my culture and my family. Uh, so we love education, our social media posts are all about it, and uh, we try our best to make sure that every person, guest who walks up to our counter, uh, they understand what they're getting. It's not just a rice bowl, but it's, and there's a lot of, there's a story behind it. It's sweet, it's savory, there's a little caramelization outside. Uh -huh. 
Liverpool and You know when you buy a pizza and you want to put stuff on it? Yeah. That's what I feel like doing because this reminds me like a potato or a gnocchi. Oh yeah. So I'm That's like, okay. Describe it. Oh, shut up. Yeah, it's what? like a, a it's an Asian gnocchi. Made out of rice. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lisa was saying that you have a word Boom. Words. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, well, I was an easy way. <laughs> so and then that that dish and stuff historically. Every celebration, you'll have a rendition of the chapter. Okay. It's a celebratory. I can see what I can see how why really it's like it's one of those like you take a bite and it's like oh yeah. Yeah, that actually happens. Mm. Bye.